Hello and welcome to part three of photosynthesis where we're covering the last section, section 8.7 of chapter 8. Before we begin, we need to remember that Rubisco is the enzyme used in the Calvin cycle in the first phase, which was called carbon fixation. This enzyme is used to convert the 6-RUBP and 6-carbon dioxide molecules into 12-PGA, so it's the carbon fixation step. It turns out that Rubisco has a little quirk. It not only does the carbon fixation or carboxylation, which is adding actually a carboxylic acid or acid group, and that comes from the CO2 uh, to RUBP to make the PGA, but it also can do a second function, and that is known as photorespiration. The active site on Rubisco can not only take in carbon dioxide, but oxygen can also be added to that active site and oxidize RUBP, which releases carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide and oxygen actually compete for the same active site. Since oxygen is one of the byproducts of photosynthesis, it's competing with carbon dioxide for that active site in Rubisco, and so there is a loss, uh, about a 20% loss of the fixed carbon. It gets released back as carbon dioxide under normal circumstances. Uh, but this process is temperature sensitive. So let's look at what's going on. Oops, let's get this in the middle here. These images are showing you the anatomy of a leaf that's been sliced open so you can see the cells and the different layers of the leaf. So this is the top of the leaf and down here is the bottom portion of the leaf. The bottoms of the leaves have these structures called stomata which are cells that can shrink and swell to open holes or create openings in the leaf to allow for gas exchange. Now, when it gets hot outside, there is a loss of water due to evaporation, and water gets pulled out of the stomata. This is not a good thing for the leaf because it needs water in the process of photosynthesis. We've seen that. So, the leaves react by closing their stomata. But when they close their stomata, they prevent carbon dioxide from getting in because that's how the CO2 gets in. And, of course, the oxygen byproduct of photosynthesis then can't get out. So there's a buildup of oxygen, so there's more oxygen in the cells and then they will come into contact with the rubisco more often than carbon dioxide because you have a higher uh, proportion of oxygen. So you will get more photorespiration instead of carbon fixation. So plants that live in very hot, arid climates have developed some mechanisms to combat this, to help retain water and get rid of the oxygen and get as much CO2 in their cells as they can. Okay, so the first method to combat this we're going to look at is used by plants known as C4 plants. And it's written like this. C4. They have an enzyme called PEP carboxylase. Some plants use the PEP carboxylase enzyme, which adds carbon dioxide to PEP to form a four carbon molecule. This essentially stores carbon dioxide in the plant and it can then be modified using a decarboxylation which releases carbon dioxide increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide for Rubisco. In hot dry climates photorespiration would remove more than half of the fixed carbon so plants that live there like many grasses will use PEP carboxylase to fix carbon into their outer mesophyll cells and that is these guys here, these cells here. So here's the PEP molecule here. So the enzyme PEP carboxylase will take carbon dioxide and add it to the PEP to make this molecule. You don't need to know all these names, but then they do that in this mesophyll cell 
and then this carbon is essentially transported into what's known as a bundle sheath cell which is uh, more interior in the leaf less susceptible to uh, the uh, evaporation from water and the carbon dioxide is then released and put into the Calvin cycle to make glucose. The malate can then be um, converted back to pyruvate which is then converted into PEP using ATP. The bundle sheath cells trap the carbon dioxide. They can't get out, uh, get out of those cells, so it holds a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the bundle sheath cells, thus um, increasing the efficiency of Rubisco uh, in the Calvin cycle. So C4 plants like grasses simply separate the process into separate cells so that they're doing the Calvin cycle inside the more interior portion of the leaf in the bundle sheath cells. Another method discussed in your chapter is done by plants known as CAM plants. Many plants that fall into the category of succulents that are found in hot regions open their stomata at night. This is opposite of other plants which open their stomata during the day while the sun is out to maximize the um, energy from the sun in photosynthesis. So they fix carbon using PEP carboxylase at night, hold on to that, and release it for the Calvin cycle during the day when ATP and NADPH are being generated by the light dependent re reactions. This is done within the same cell instead of separating it into two different cells. And this method of um, doing the two different reactions at different times of the day are done by CAM plants. Okay, so that concludes our overview of photosynthesis. Thanks for watching.